Good morning. I would like to welcome you to the Mount Carmel Church morning worship service online. It's been a great week, a beautiful week, a very hot week, and many of us probably thought, boy, it's, it's the middle of summer, but it's still in the month of May. But just like to welcome you to our morning service this morning. We're glad that you are able to, uh, to be with us. If this is your first time watching or listening, we'd again like to welcome you to the Mount Carmel Church. If you don't have a church family, we would love to have you come and be part of our church family here at the Mount Carmel Church. Our address is 3023 Clover Run Road, uh, Mahaffey, Pennsylvania. And I'm Pastor Brian. And we have services on Sunday mornings at 10 o'clock in our church building. We have a children's program that morning uh, for those nursery through fifth grade. We also have a Sunday evening service at 6 o'clock uh, with a youth ministry, uh, Youth 412, uh, that also meets at 6 o'clock in our fellowship hall. And then we also have Wednesday night uh, midweek Bible study. We just love to have you come and be part of our church service. If you have any questions about our church or would like to talk to me, our phone number is 814-277-4435. But I want to welcome you to our morning worship service. Each and every week we uh, do a verse of the month, and we have a verse for this month found in Hebrews chapter 13 and verse 15. But uh, just before we do, let's go to the Lord in prayer. Our dear Heavenly Father, we thank you for this day. We thank you for our day that we can come and to worship you. And dear Lord, we just pray for this day. We pray, dear Lord, for open hearts for what you would have for us. And dear Lord, we just pray as we come to this time in our morning, on a Sunday morning, a, uh, a summary Sunday morning, dear Lord, that you would guide and direct. We pray for, dear Lord, as we reach out to those around us, Maybe we're watching this morning and just have a, a lot of things going on in our life. Dear Lord, help us to look to you. We pray for our passage and message this morning. Dear Lord, promises, promises, and the importance of keeping promises in our lives. But dear Lord, we thank you for all that you do for us. We pray for those that may be sick or have health issues, dear Lord. We just ask for guidance in their lives. We ask that your hand be upon them. We also know that, that many things are going on in this world and in this nation. And dear Lord, we pray as Christians that we would be on our knees praying for this nation and continuing to look to you for guidance. And as we pray, dear Lord, help us to again realize and to understand that you are in control. But dear Lord, how that each and every one of us as Christians, as Christ followers, as we do our part, help us to look to you. We pray for our service this morning. We ask for guidance in all that we do. And we pray these things in Jesus' name. Amen. Our verse of the month for the month of May has been Hebrews chapter 13 and verse 15. So let's say this together. If you're sitting with somebody, encourage them to, to also say this verse together. But let's all say this together this morning. Hebrews 13, 15. By him, therefore, let us offer the sacrifice of praise to God continually, that is, the fruit of our lips, giving thanks to his name. Hebrews 13, 15. Each and every week we, we sing a song prior to our, our time in God's word, and this morning I'd like us to sing a song entitled, Grace Greater Than Our Sins. You know, as we think of the grace that God has for each and every one of us. We serve a gracious and merciful God. But God's grace is greater than our sins because of what was done on the cross for each and every one of us through Jesus Christ and His shed blood. Let's sing this song together. Let's sing out. Uh, sing a joyful noise unto the Lord. And uh, let's uh, sing this great hymn, Grace Greater Than Our Sins.
grace greater than all of our sins. As we think of that, I just hope that you sang out this morning. This morning we're continuing our series in, in our, uh, that we've been doing on the Sermon on the Mount called Redefined. How do each and every one of us, as we've been looking at the characteristics of a Christian's life, the importance of realizing and understanding our relationship, first of all, with Jesus Christ, then our character, how we should, uh, how people should see us, things in our lives that need to sometimes be adjusted as we go through life. But this morning we're going to be looking at Matthew chapter 5. So if you turn to Matthew chapter 5, I would like us, we'll be looking at verses 37, or excuse me, 33 through 37. And as we think of this, I, I want us just to really... Uh, Look again at our lives as we look at making promises, and the message is entitled, Promises, Promises. You know, a few years back, two guys interviewed thousands of people, and they published their findings in a book called The Day America Told the Truth. And of those surveyed, 91% said that they lie on a regular basis. 86% said that they lie to their parents regularly. 75% said they lie to their friends. And 69% said they lie to their spouses. Along with 50% said that they regularly called into work sick when they weren't. Well, there's a recent study that compared the ethics of Christians and non-Christian adults. And they found that almost as many Christians steal from work as non-Christians. Almost as many Christians use company phones for personal long-distance calls as non-Christians. And they found that Christians are just as likely to falsify their income taxes and give bribes to obtain a maybe a building permit or some kind of permit in their town or their city or their township, wherever they live. And it's just about the same as they ignore construction obligations today. And many today, as we, we think about this, as they're, they're, they did this study, that there's as many Christians as non-Christians that steal time from work. And also, they selectively obey what laws they want to obey. Well, I'd like us this morning to look at a passage of Scripture in Matthew chapter 5. Matthew chapter 5, I'd like us to read and to look and follow along in verses 33 through 37. Because this passage reveals some important reasons why we must live truthful lives. As Christians, we need to be an example to those around us, don't we? We need to be an example to all of those in the areas that we live. But let's start reading in verse 33, and I'll read through verse 37. Again ye have heard that it hath been said by them of old time, Thou shalt not forswear thyself, but shalt perform unto the Lord thine oaths. But I say unto you, swear not at all, neither by heaven, for it is God's throne, nor by the earth, for it is his footstool, neither by Jerusalem, for it is the city of the great king. Neither shalt thou swear by thy head, because thou canst not make one hair white or black. But let your communication be, yea, yea, nay, nay, for whatsoever is more than these cometh of evil. Again, I just want us to, to look at this passage this morning as we've been studying through the Sermon on the Mount and understand that Jesus is speaking to the disciples and those that gathered about their character, some important things about their character. But we also see some important reasons this morning why we must live truthful and God-honoring lives. The first thing I want us to see this morning as we study this passage of Scripture is dishonesty undermines our relationship. When we lie and don't keep our promises, it destroys trust. And trust is what healthy relationships are built upon. You know, honesty helps us grow in our relationships with Christ and with others. Ephesians chapter 4 and verse 15, if you turn there with me, 
Ephesians chapter 4, verse 15. We read this, Ephesians chapter 4 in verse 15. Let me start in verse 14. That we henceforth be no more children tossed to and fro and carried about with every wind of doctrine by the slight of men and cunning craftiness whereby they lie in wait to deceive. In other words, tossed to and fro through the world and tossed to and fro through life not knowing which side we're standing on, or not knowing what we're doing. But then verse 15 it says, But speaketh, but speaking the truth in love, may grow up into him in all things, which is the head, even Christ. You know, as we see this, we look at this area of dishonesty, where dishonesty undermines our relationship with others. I'm sure all of us have been thinking about maybe somebody in our life over the years that's told us something, give us a promise, or maybe told us they would change, or, or do this or do that, and all of a sudden we lose friendship with them because they, they never fulfill what they say they're going to do. That's, a, that's an issue. But as we saw in Ephesians 4.15, but speaking the truth in love, may grow up into him in all things, which is the head even of Christ. Second thing I want us to see this morning is dishonesty is contrary to the character of God. You know, God is a commitment keeper. Let me say that again. God is a commitment keeper. In Numbers chapter 23 and verse 19, it says, God is not a man that he should lie. Neither the Son of Man, that he should repent. Hath he said, and shall he not do it? Or hath he spoken, and shall he not make it good? You know, we see that and see where that God is the commitment keeper. But we also know of somebody that is a liar, that doesn't keep his commitments, and that's Satan. Satan, however, is the father of lies. In John chapter 8 and verse 44, John chapter 8 and verse 44, we see a, a passage here which, which tells us that very thing. John chapter 8 and verse 44. Ye are of your father the devil, and the lusts of your father ye will do. He was a murderer from the beginning, and abode not in the truth, because there is no truth in him. When he speaketh a lie, he speaketh of his own. For he is a liar, and... What is the last three words in that passage? And the father of it. John chapter 8, verse 44. So we see that Christ is the commitment keeper. That's who we should make our example in our lives and follow. We also know, though, that Satan is the father of lies. And how many times have we all been told lies? In John chapter 8 and verse 44, as I just said, the last part of that verse says, He was a murderer from the beginning and abode not in the truth, because there is no truth in him. When he speaketh a lie, he speaketh of his own, for he is a liar and the father of lies. So we see that dishonesty is contrary to the character of God. Thirdly, this morning, I want us to see that being a Christ follower means a commitment to truth. We often talk about Christians, and we talk, I use the word Christ follower, because there's many people today that say, well, I'm a Christian, I, I, I believe there's a God, but that's as far as it goes. So I often use the words Christ follower, because that means somebody that has faith and trust in Jesus Christ and has accepted him into, your, to, into our heart. But being a Christ follower means a commitment to truth. Do you have a commitment to truth today? We need to be people of our word. You know, we see this world today and we hear so much. We hear so many promises and promises. And we hear this promise and that promise. And many of those promises are never kept. But we as Christ followers need to be people of our word. 
You want to be known as someone who keeps your promise no matter what. You know, but, but in our lives, there are many times that we can justify why we have broken a promise. And you may say, Pastor, what does that mean? Well, don't all of us from time to time, it, when we break a promise, we can justify it? And we justify it by maybe thinking or saying something like, I didn't think it was all that important. Or I thought I might be able to keep the promise, but, but I couldn't. Or it seems the right thing to do at the time when I made the promise, but now I've got other things to do, so I'm not, I don't need to make that promise anymore. You know, being a Christ follower means a commitment to truth. This morning as we looked at this passage of Scripture, I want us to look at three areas to challenge us. Three areas in our lives that, that are, can be challenges to us. In other words, challenge us on a daily basis. The first one I want us to see is to keep your promise even when they seem insignificant. You know, when we start to justify a little dishonesty because it seems insignificant, be careful because you're one step closer to doing what you never thought you would do. And that's break a promise. You know, those little areas test our integrity. And God takes stretching the truth very seriously. Every time a casual commitment is broken, some damage is done. Some damage is done maybe in a relationship or something that, that you've been part of. You know, we might be very familiar with those lies, but there are other lies that destroy our integrity. And there are several ways that we can be careless with the truth on a daily basis because we don't see it as a big deal. Maybe you thought that yourself, or maybe someone has said to you, well, that wasn't a big deal, that, that isn't a big thing. Well, I want us to remember this morning as we're challenged by this passage of Scripture, that we need to keep our promises even when they seem insignificant. You know, we lie to, to cover up our mistakes. Or maybe we exaggerate. Maybe you've heard somebody tell a story that you were part of or, or maybe a situation that you were part of and you thought, wow, that, that isn't anything like it was. Or maybe we've done that ourselves to maybe impress somebody. Or maybe we've misled somebody into thinking something about somebody else. In Ephesians chapter 4 and verse 25, it says, Wherefore, putting away lying, speak every man truth with his neighbor. For we are members one of another. In other words, treating each one like you want to be treated. And how important that is, as we look at God's word here through 33 through 37 of Matthew chapter 5. The importance of realizing and understanding how that in our lives, even when something seems insignificant, it can be very significant to somebody else. The second thing I want us to see this morning is keep your promises even when you regret making them. Maybe you regret make, making a promise because things didn't turn out the way you had hoped. Maybe when you made the promise, you'd hoped that you would have more time. I'm sure everybody that's watching and listening has all kinds of time, but no, we don't. Today, time is something that we find flying by us. But maybe when you made the promise, you, you thought you would have more time, or you'd have more money, or maybe you would know have more knowledge on what to do. Maybe it was one of those things, well, I promise I'll do that for you, and you wanted to look it up or, or deal with it or, or Google it or whatever you may want to do. Or may, maybe you can just answer it by more whatever, and you fill in the rest of that, that line. But maybe you made the promise, you'd, and when you made that promise, you'd hoped that you would have, and you can fill in the rest of that. Maybe you made a promise to do something because you thought you'd get something in return. Maybe money, maybe another favor, maybe popularity, maybe a, a position somewhere. That's something that we need to think about. But second, 
challenge that I want us to see this morning is keep your promise even when you regret making them. You know, some people think that if they don't commit to anything, it's easier to get out of the obligation and responsibilities that are there, maybe for that job or maybe for doing something in the church, so they don't get involved. But I would ask you today, maybe the Lord's leading you to help in something, to follow through with something, or maybe there's something in your life right now that you've promised to do for a long, long time, and you haven't never fulfilled it. You know, there are times when we have to make commitments. We have to promise to do certain things whether we like it or not. And it's our commitments that defines who we are. You know, we can make promises that we don't like, but fulfill them in ways that show integrity and fortify our witness for Christ. I don't know how many times I've talked to people that says, well, boy, you know, so-and-so promised to do something and, and they've never followed through with it. And it leads on to say, well, you know, they supposedly say they're a Christian and look at them. Maybe you regret making a promise because keeping your word ends up costing you more than you expected. A passage of scripture that comes to mind in the book of Psalms is Psalms chapter 15 and verse 4. In whose eyes a vile person is contemned. But he honoreth them that fear the Lord. He that sweareth to his own hurt and changeth not. You know, maybe things have not turned out the way that you had hoped, but you keep your commitment anyway. C.S. Lewis took the truth seriously. His biography tells of the suffering he endured because, because he, he kept a promise he had made to a buddy during World War I. This friend was worried about the care of his wife and a small daughter if he should be killed in battle, so Lewis assured him that if that were to happen, he would look after them. And as the war drug on, the man was killed. True to his word, Lewis took care of his friend's family. Yet no matter how helpful he tried to be, the woman was ungrateful in fact, she was rude and, and arrogant, and she was domineering. But through it all, Lewis kept forgiving her. He refused to let her actions become an excuse to maybe renege on his promise that he had made to his friend. Boy, that's a true friend, what C.S. Lewis did. It's not a coincidence that Jesus follows his section on divorce with the challenge to keep your promise. You know, we seem today to have a problem with keeping our promises in our nation. You know, we see that so much. We see that in marriages. We see that in, in work situations. We see that between friends. But we seem to have a great problem keeping keeping promises. Another problem is that we have trouble keeping our promises to Jesus. You know, we'll stand in front of a group of people and say, I believe that Jesus is the Christ, the Son of the living God, and I accept Him as my Lord and Savior. I heard a pastor once say this, that we like the Savior part, but we're not too bothered about the Lord part. So we let our promises slip. Things come in the way. Maybe it's an activity, maybe it's a sporting event, maybe it's work, maybe it's just stuff. We allow it to come in a way of our relationship with Jesus Christ, our relationship on a, on a weekly basis, a relationship on a daily basis. We let stuff get in the way. And how important that is to us to think about. Are we leaving our promises slip to the Lord? Are we leaving our promises slip to the one, our Heavenly Father, who sent His Son to die on that cross for each and every one of us? The third thing I, I want us to see is to keep your promise even when you're the only one who knows. When you can keep a promise to yourself, 
you will tell the truth to others. Promises to ourselves are sometimes the hardest one to keep because no one else knew that we promised anything. But you know who does? God does. You know there's no accountability when we promise something to ourselves and seemingly no consequences can ever take place. But once you start breaking promises to yourself, it becomes much easier to break a promise to others. You know, Jesus makes it clear in Matthew chapter 5 that whenever we make a promise, we do so in the presence of God. And when we break a promise, we're not just lying to others or ourselves, we're also lying to God. Back in Jesus' day, the Pharisees had developed an elaborate set of rules governing when a man was bound by his word and when he was not. You know, we have that kind of similar oath that we swear to, that we're telling the truth. You know, some examples of those that you may have heard from time to time is, cross my heart and hope to die. The remaining part of that says, and stick a needle in my eye. Maybe you said that as, as children, but... You know, we, we many times say, whoops, I, I, that's not very true because I, I crossed my fingers. Or maybe you've had to swear on a stack of Bibles or say, I'll, I'll swear on a stack of Bibles. Or maybe you've used this one, may lightning strike me dead if I'm not telling you the truth. But Jesus said something to us in Matthew chapter 5, verses 34 and, 30, 34 and 35. Let's take a look at this. Hope you're still in Matthew chapter 5. But I say unto you, swear not at all, neither by heaven, for it is God's throne, nor by the earth, for it is his footstool, neither by Jerusalem, for it is the city of the great king. You know, some people have declared that this passage, what it really means is that Christians cannot take oath in court or anywhere else. But that's not what this is saying, because the Old Testament records many times that there were oaths given by Abraham and Isaac and Jacob and Joseph and Jonathan. They all took oaths. And Jesus swore an oath in his trial by the Sanhedrin. And several times in the New Testament, followers of Christ swore an oath. What Jesus is wanting us to, to realize and to understand here is the importance of truthfulness. The importance of truthfulness all the way around because God takes lying very seriously. The book of Proverbs, Proverbs chapter 12 and verse 22 says, Lying lips are an abomination to the Lord, but they that deal truth are His delight. The book of Revelation in Revelation 21 and verse 8 says, Up the fearful and unbelieving and eat abominable, and murderers, and whoremongers, and sorcerers, and idolaters, and all liars, shall have their part in the lake which burneth with fire and brimstone, which is the second death. So we see three challenges today, many challenges, through God's Word to challenge us. So how do I get better at, at keeping my promises? How do I get better at that? Well, the first one I want us to see is to admit your struggle. At one time or another, we've all struggled with maybe saying the truth. Because we were afraid of something that we would get in, in, in trouble for. So it was far easier to, to tell maybe that little white lie or that, that not the whole story about something. But we need to be willing to admit our struggle. Admit our struggle to the Lord. And allow Him to work in our lives. Allow Him to, to show us the importance of, of telling the truth. To be willing to, to tell it and to work through situations. The second thing I want us to think about is to think before we speak with your promises. Reliability builds credibility. Can other people count on you to follow through and do what you say you will do? Do you ever actually pray for that person that you're going to do something for? Or maybe that church situation. 
but be willing to think before you speak and to pray about it. To pray for the Lord to, to give you time, for the Lord to, to help you through that, for the Lord to maybe show you something that you're, you're difficult, having a difficult time doing, or, or maybe it's that promise that you made, maybe it's for this year, maybe to, to help in church somewhere. We are going to be having an up, upcoming VBS here in July, Vacation Bible School, after not having it for a year. And we need workers and, and those to help. Maybe the Lord is tugging at you there to make a promise that, hey, I'll help that day or I'll help that week. But that's important. To think before you speak. In other words, be willing to pray and give it to the Lord. The third thing when we think about promises and how we can better do them is to examine our motives. Why am I making this promise? What do I really want? You know, you may have made a promise at some point in your life and thought, wow, I'm going to get a lot out of this promise, or I'm going to make somebody do something for me out of this promise, or boy, look what people are going to think about me after I do this. God wants us to have the right motives. Do you have the right motives? I want us to realize today as we read this passage of Scripture in verse 37, Let's start verse 36. Neither shalt thou swear by thy head, because thou canst, canst not make one hair white or black. But let your communication be yea, yea, nay, nay, for whatsoever is more than these cometh of evil. We need to remember in our lives as Christians that yes means yes, and no means no. You know, by the time of Christ, the Jews had developed an elaborate system of oath-taking, which often formed the basis that they could actually lie and say, well, I only did what the law said. In other words, there were stages of truth and also a falsehood within the system of, of taking an oath during that day. And Jesus made an announcement, and that's why I believe that it's here in the Sermon on the Mount. Jesus announced that it was unnecessary if one were in the habit of, of telling the truth, they wouldn't have to take that oath. But their life, it would just come out. And his command was, swear not in verse 34. Does, and it doesn't have anything to do with cursing, but to oath taking. You know, we as Christ followers are to speak the truth in such a way that our yes means yes, and our no means no. When you say yes, make sure that is what you mean. So today as we looked at this passage of Scripture and we looked at different things in this, um, in our lives and we're challenged by three things. Promises, promises. As Christ followers, are we showing through our life, through our attitude, through our actions, that God is in control of our life. Let's close in a word of prayer. Our dear Heavenly Father, we thank you for this day. I thank you for this passage of Scripture that we just read about, and as we looked at promises that we've made in our lives. Dear Lord, there's probably not a person watching or listening today that has not at some time in their life promised something to somebody and maybe haven't followed through with it. Dear Lord, I pray that as Christians, as Christ's followers, that we would take the attitude that if we make a promise, we need to follow through with it. If we make a promise, we're going to do the very best we can to glorify you to others. And dear Lord, we thank you for this passage today. I pray, dear Lord, if there's someone that does not know you, that today would be the day that right where they're at, they would ask forgiveness of their sins and ask you to be their Lord and Savior, understanding what was done on the cross for them through the shed blood. Because there is no more important decision that they'll ever make in their life, dear Lord. It really comes down to, to a decision that they make, whether to accept you as or, or reject you, because eternity is forever. And by accepting you into their life, they will spend eternity in heaven. Rejecting you, they'll spend eternity in hell. That, that's the true 
facts. Dear Lord, help us as we think about our lives, that we are godly examples to those around us. Help us as Christ followers, if we've been making some promises that we haven't followed through with, that we would change that attitude and change it from this day forward and allow you to work in our lives. And dear Lord, if we may have a tough decision right now about making a promise to something or someone has asked us or we see a need somewhere, help us to look to you through prayer and to ask through you for guidance and direction. But we thank you for this day. We thank you for our time and your word. And dear Lord, as we looked at promises, promises, I pray as Christians that we, high, we hold them very high in our lives. And I pray these things in Jesus' name. Amen. I would like to thank you today for watching and listening. And again, if you'd like to have a question about something or would like to talk to me, feel free to call our church, 814-277-4435. And I would love to talk to you. But thank you for watching and listening today, and may God bless.